So you have your new men pin puppy at home. Super, super exciting. But what do you train them on first? When do you start training them? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the three things that you should be training your puppy on from day one. Hey guys, my name is Nate. Welcome back to Men Pin Nation. We're talking about three things that you should be teaching your men pin really from day one. Uh, the first one we're talking about is there's super amount of power in using their name and teaching them their name. So why do we want to teach them their name so early on? We want to teach it to them because that is going to be the, the foundation of all future training with them. All the obedience training that you may want to do with them down the line as they continue to grow you know, as a puppy and into an adult dog. Building that foundation of their name, them recognizing their name and responding to their name is very key. In order to do this, the best way to do this is to use their meal times really. So use their meal times for, for those training sessions. I mean, you don't want to be trying to do long training sessions with the puppy, especially when they're super young. So having those training sessions when they're eating, you know, their breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, will really help them to um, not have to do a bunch of extra training, but also just be able to train with you at those meal times, and also will make it where you don't really need to give them treats at this point. They'll just be super excited to even get the food that you're gonna be training them on. And so when you're going about doing this, you know you're gonna be bringing the meal to them and pretty much be feeding them directly from your hand, um, and maybe not their whole meal depending on how much you're feeding them, but just you know taking you know, 10 kibble pieces, put them in your hand, and simply just when you say their name and, you know, give it to them, you know, give them a yes command, right when they respond to your, their name, yes, and feed them. And just keep repeating this over and over again. Name, you know, yes, reward. Name, yes, reward. Now, of course, obviously I'm saying it like this, but make sure you're super excited and they understand that that is the best thing that they can do is anytime they hear that, what they will learn to be their name that they need to respond. Now, the key point here is we're not teaching them what their name is to then later on use that as you know their recall. So you know you will be teaching them some type of recall later on um, and you'll come up with a different command for that. But the key point here is we're teaching them that anytime they hear their name that their attention should come directly to us. So a couple things to be careful about here is that while you want to make sure not only that you don't use their name as a come here tool, even when they're a puppy, and maybe they don't really understand come here, you wanna make sure that you leave the name to getting their attention and then doing whatever motion at that point to kind of get them to come towards you. The other thing you gotta be worried about is you don't wanna be using their name in a negative connotation. Now this is super hard. Now I'm a parent myself and sometimes if I'm hollering at my kid who's down the hallway, you know, I just start you know, hollering their name out and I'm trying to get their attention or maybe I'm upset with them to be honest and I use their name maybe in more of a stern tone. With a puppy, you don't wanna be doing this. You have to be careful. Um, you don't wanna be yelling their name. This kind of goes back to that recall. You don't wanna be yelling their name as they're running away from you because then that's gonna turn this into you know, you're using their name as the, as the recall command and it's not going to be very effective with everything else. And then they're going to hear their name and they're not going to want to come towards you. So definitely make sure that the name's only positive and it's only used to get their attention. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is we really want to teach our puppies to be handled from an early age. Now this will really help when they are going to be going to the vet later on or maybe you need to check for something on them at, their, at the house, um, teaching them in a manner when they're really young and when they're not gonna be needing to be actually looked at for some type of you know injury or if you're trying to check their teeth or anything like that. If you do it when they're, it's not expected that you actually have to check something and maybe they're in pain, it'll make it a lot easier when you actually have to approach that situation or like I said, when they go to the vet and have those visits and it's a little more invasive there. So the best way to do this is when they're super young, obviously teach them up front that that's just a way that they can be expected to be handled. You want to do this a little bit at a time. Don't make this one of those situations that you're trying to just do everything all at once. So as they're doing meal time, you know, we talked in the first tip about 
you know, using their name for part of it. Well, the other part of the meal, you could also use it for handling them. So maybe, you know, they're gonna be eating out of their bowl or, you know, maybe you're gonna feed them right out of the palm of your hand, right? And so while they're doing that, you know, maybe that's a good time that you're gonna be checking their ears. You know, you're taking the other hand, you're gonna check their ears, you're gonna kind of fold it back, you know, be very gentle, obviously, but look in the ear there and kind of, you know, fold it back, you know, and obviously give them many, much praise when they allow you to do that. Um, and this may be a good time to also introduce some maybe outside treats as well. Um, and then move to different body parts. You know, the next day, pick a different body part. You know, take their paw and be able to look at it and, you know, spread spread the, um, the pad apart a little bit to kind of look in there, um, kind of look at the nail. You know, I would be very gentle, but you can kind of give a slight, you know, um, tug on the nail just a little bit just to show them that, you know, you're touching it, but it's not going to hurt them. That will be super helpful when it comes to doing any type of nail trimming um, later on as well. Because once again, they'll trust you that you're not going to hurt them when you touch their nail. Um, and continue to do this throughout the rest of their body. Uh, another big one is you have to be careful and you don't want to necessarily be forceful, but you need to show them that them laying down and you rolling them on their back or on their side is really the way that they should be that way because you're going it's the easiest way to do a lot of things with nail clipping and also just inspecting you know their underbelly and things like that so from early on blitz you know we when we got him as a puppy you know we would just lay him down and you know we would show him out you know the trust us and we would give him treats and we would do that we would obviously pet him and everything and then you know we'd be able to roll him on his back um, and then kind of keep doing that process, you know, to the point where, you know, he would just lay back with us. We'd be able to carry him around and he had no problem with that at all. Um, had no issue with us doing that and trusted us completely. So doing that as a puppy from an early age and just teaching them that that's what's expected will definitely make it where later on, and when, like I said, when you have to do those in situations, it's a lot easier. Now, for some people, maybe they don't have that luxury of having a brand new puppy. You know, maybe they adopted an older dog. You know, this process can still work. Now, you need to be careful and you need to identify what issues, uh, you know, that they may come to your home with. But doing the same thing, showing them little by little, taking your time and trusting you will really pay dividends still and is still possible to do even with some type of rescue dog. Hey, guys, before we get to our last tip here, I did want to ask you real quick. Hey, do me a favor and uh, if you've enjoyed this and you're getting value, you know, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the little notification bell next to it, and that will ensure that each and every week when we put out these videos that they come right to your inbox and they come right to, you know, right on your screen there so you can tune in with us each and every week. Okay, let's get to the last tip now. Okay, so the third thing that you need to be teaching your puppy is all about resource guarding. So what is resource guarding? That is simply guarding different resources throughout the home um, that a puppy may do. Now this could be something like their food and water, or it could be treats, um, maybe some type of toy, um, or it could just maybe be you know, a corner of the house that they like to guard as their own. Now generally, this is gonna happen maybe if you have multiple dogs um, and as they're learning, but the easiest thing to do is to teach them early on to trust you, right? So going back to the handling, now, I wouldn't necessarily say as a puppy's eating from day one that you should be, you know, taking their food bowl away and, and kind of showing that dominance just like very abruptly. But you got to think if we're talking about all these other um, of how we're going to feed them, right? You know, maybe we're going to feed them out of the palm of our hand um, and then we're going to show them and we're going to be the one that control the food to give it to them. Another key point is if you kind of make them wait, you know, is another good trick you can kind of teach them early on too before they eat. All of these things kind of build that they understand that the food comes from you and that they trust you and that it's not a sense of that you're going to take the food from them, but it's a sense of they understand, you know, you give the food, the food you know, gets taken away. So it really helped that relationship and it will help later on as well to make sure that any other thing that you bring into the house, they understand from the beginning that they don't need to fight for it, that it's going to be available to them, but also that you kind of control those resources and you allow them to come and like I said, and allow, allow them to go as well. So if you haven't brought your men pin puppy home quite yet and you're thinking about implementing these things, another thing you may be thinking about is, well, that's good to know, but what can I do you know, on that very first night? Well, we made a video all about surviving the first night with your men pin puppy and we'll link it right over here at the top here. So go check that video out all about surviving the first night. Thanks for joining us today um, and we will see you in the next video.